Good morning, everybody. So I thought today we'd do something a little bit sort of different or uh, yeah, something a little different. Uh, it's uh, well, we'll meditate on the scriptures from my one of my favorite Vaishnava authors, Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. He had this uh, wild glorification of Lord Chaitanya, uh, which the whole worship of Lord Chaitanya was pretty wild anyway. It was very free. and I mean, that's what I've always liked about Lord Chaitanya, his freedom in worship. Uh, it's just, it, it's like you get so uh, intoxicated, literally, uh, by chanting the names of God that you just, it's just kind of a different mood. And that's the Vrindavan mood. And that's all through the worship of uh, in Lord Chaitanya's time. People were just... All right, great. Hey, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. So we'll read some of his wonderful glorification in this uh, book called um, Nectar Moon of Lord Chaitanya. And um, this, I'll just pick a chapter here. Um, this is, uh, let's see, we'll do the chapter. Firm conviction that Lord Chaitanya is the worshipable supreme uh, Godhead. Okay, so he starts out, O foolish mind, please take shelter of Lord Gauranga, who is the transcendental personality of Godhead, who is hidden from the view of the Vedas, and who with his own transcendental potency plunged the entire world into the great nectar ocean of love for the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. I... Uh, <laughs> it's pretty moving, man. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> I mean, I can feel it, you know, even here, you know, 500 years. You know, this, these verses are amazing sometimes. Thank you, Lord. You know, to me, if I if you're reading verses and you don't feel moved by them, touched by them in the heart, you know, it's like, what's the point? <laughs> this is what Lord, the kind of worship Lord Chaitanya came to give, where you feel, you know, it's very similar with Jesus. You know, when Jesus came, he uh, yeah, and he asked his followers, people just started to spontaneously follow him. And they, he said, well, why are you following me? He said, because we want to feel the scriptures. We want to feel them, not just read them up here. Just uh, feel them, be moved by them, relish them. This is what this incarnation came to give. This is what Jesus gave. You know, anybody who has a connection with Jesus, you feel those scriptures, man. You just love them, relish them, you know. Give you happiness. Okay? The same thing with the name, chanting Hare Krishna also. This incarnation gives the power to chant. <laughs> also, going to Navadweep, even now. I've been there so many times, I can't believe how easy it is to chant there. I don't know what I'm not doing there now, man. <laughs> I'm always thinking about Mayapur and Navadweep. It's just so, the potency is there still. You could just chant and it's just so easy. It's like, you know, amazing. Okay, so anyway, we just magnified Lord Chaitanya a little bit here. So, if someone can attain the supreme goal of life by devotedly hearing about, meditating on, or glorifying Lord Marari, then very good for him. Let him do it. For myself, however, I shall only worship the hidden sweetness that fills the shoreless ocean of <laughs> pure love of Krishna that flows from Lord Moranga. Yeah. Yeah, even even a beginner can appreciate Lord Chaitanya, you know, if you just somehow develop some, some kind of faith in that. I mean, just association with Lord Chaitanya, just coming to hear, you know, hear anything about Lord Chaitanya. You know, the, the Vedas say, just just hearing the name Lord Goranga, even without faith, something sprouts from that. <laughs> you know, this devotional creeper is watered without even faith. You know? <laughs> so some may worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead with the hope of the attaining the four goals of life, material piety, sense gratification, economic development, and liberation. That's what everybody's after. I mean, one of those goals. But who knows about devotional service, really? However, 
no, others may reject all the objects of worship and simply become servants of Lord Krishna. For myself, my mind is greedy to attain the great secret of pure love for Krishna. For this reason, I take shelter of Lord Gaurachandra. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's so true. So amazing. Uh, <laughs> You know why he wrote like this? Yeah, I, I can only imagine, but just think about it, 500 years before. He was worshipping Lakshmi Narayan, okay? This is a very pious, amazing worship, worship of the Lord, you know, in the more, I think, mature or uh, uh, Dwarka mood. Uh, so he's doing like this worshiping puja, you know, very serious devotee, you know, born in India and doing like this. So Lord Chaitanya comes knocking on his door. What happens? He saw something really different. That's why he wrote like this. You know, he's saying, God, you know, it up leveled his worship. You know, all of a sudden now he was he was worshiping Lakshmi Narayan. Now he started worshiping Radha and Krishna and becoming attracted to the deepest form of Krishna. So that's why he's talking about his own experience. You know, and this happened in, in Chaitanya Charitamrita over and over. The Lord would meet people and their level of uh, worship would be up-leveled from whatever it was. If you were a Buddhist, you would become a Vaishnava, <laughs> often. <laughs> because it's he showed by demonstration that this kind of worship is more juicy and more uh, more relishable than anything. The only the Lord could do this with he had the power, you know, Radharani, you know, his power to show this and to demonstrate it. So some may worship the supreme personality of Godhead with the hope. To, oh, I read that already. My mind is going. Yeah, uh, my faith in Vedic and ordinary duties. My embarrassment to sing, dance, and laugh, and my natural tendency to be absorbed in material act activities have been stolen away by a very powerful golden complexion thief. <laughs> Who is this divine person showering millions of nectar oceans of intensely blissful, splendid, and pure love of Krishna from the corners of his eyes? glistening with mercy. Who is this person whose fair complexion form is splendid as golden young plantain tree? Who is this person who has suddenly made my heart become so ardently devoted to his feet? Lord Chaitanya was Krishna. But to become devoted to Krishna, you try chanting Krishna's mantra. Without association with Lord Chaitanya, somehow it's very would be very difficult. Or you just get a more kind of a you know pious feel, or maybe a little bit of bliss, something like this. But with association with Lord Chaitanya, you become devoted to Him. Automate your heart this oh it just melts for the Lord. Yeah, it's a loud train. It'll it'll go by. I'm in Flagstaff. Always trains coming by here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, you just automatically become devoted. This is the Lord, and that means you become devoted to Krishna. This is why I, I focus so much on Lord Chaitanya's worship because you become devoted easily. It's just like effortlessly, you know. And and that means if you if you become devoted to Lord Chaitanya, you become devoted to Krishna. You know, Nityananda would go around. He didn't say he'd preach. He didn't preach about Krishna. He preached about Lord Chaitanya. And just just chant his name. You know, chant his name. Name means pastimes and all these things. Even if you can't follow rules and regulations strictly in the Vaishnava thing or anything, uh, Prabodhananda that talks about this, you know, it, you'll attain all that you wish. If you wish devotion and you really want that, you will get that through Lord Gauranga. 
even though you're not, yeah, a person can be following rules and regulations really strictly in the Vaishnava, in whatever group you're in, and if you're not focusing on Lord Chaitanya and, and serving Lord Chaitanya by hearing, chanting, remembering about him, associating with his devotees by chanting their glories and his glories and all of this, being absorbed in this, you know, uh, a person who does that, who doesn't do anything, will get more benefit than you, even though you're strictly following in your pukka and you chanted your 16 rounds and all of that. Now, this is not my my opinion. This is his opinion. This is the opinion of Vrindavan Das Thakur, Krishna Das Kaviraj. It's all in, all in there. I can, we'll probably come across some verses like that. Okay. But that's how auspicious Lord Chaitanya is. You know, when Prabhupada came to America, he would, he he did Chaitanya Charitamrita classes. Even in the 1966, he was doing that too, because he knew how auspicious Lord Chaitanya was. Panchatattva is there with the Radha and Krishna worship, because how auspicious and important Lord Chaitanya is. Bhakti Siddhanta, he had his neophyte disciples read Chaitanya Bhagavat for 108 times. Neophytes read that 108 times because of the auspiciousness of this incarnation. <laughs> So anyway, I, I'm just here to remind myself and others about how auspicious Lord Chaitanya is. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's just like, very similar to like Jesus. You know, Jesus, if you really believe in him, you will get a, a, a spiritual experience. You know, it's, a, it's amazing like that. Lord Chaitanya is like that, and even more in many ways. In more in re revelations and realization and ras. The teaching of Ross is only in the, this this line here. You know, you can't find this anywhere. Teaching of Rasa, you know, devotional mellows. Where do you find that? <laughs> this is because of this incarnation, who comes only once every millions and millions of years to teach such a thing. So we're very fortunate to be here. And, you know, the, even anybody watching and myself, will, you know, speaking all this, we're all very fortunate. <clears throat> so, in essence, the whole glorification of this poem of Prabodhananda is just to stress how important this incarnation is so that we get interested, you know, to give ear. Now, his complexion is as fair as molten gold, and his form uh, filled with the splendid, blissful nectar of pure transcendental love. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has mercifully appeared in the town of Navadweep. In Navadweep, every home celebrates great festivals in honor of Bhakti Devi, the goddess of devotion. Navadweep is sweeter than Vaikuntha. And my heart finds its happiness in that of transcendental abode of the Navadweep. I, can I share how, how, how auspicious? I have personal experience of this. When I was doing these bhakti uh, uh, satsangs in uh, in South India, and I would go to these Mayavadi places, and I, I would take a rooftop, you know. And I had this one lady. She was a Mayavadi. She was she was like totally a Mayavadi. I mean, and but she was interested in what I, what I was talking about. It was like God's arrangement, and she followed me all over South India, uh, and listened to uh, glorification of Lord Chaitanya and Krishna and all of this. But she really believed that bhakti and my and impersonalism was basically the same thing. You know, so. So she follows me, and I finally, and I'm just going around. She keeps coming, you know. I said, okay, well, let's see, it must be men. <laughs> and then she goes even to Mayapur. She follows me to Mayapur. And this lady says, this hardcore Mayavadi. And so then we start one month of bhakti, uh, of uh, uh, Gaur Kata for one month. Well, first of all, we get off the train <laughs> in Mayapur. And she says... What is this place? I, I, she, she felt like she was swimming in this Brahmin. You know, she said, "This, this energy here just feels so different. I just feel this. You know, I've never felt anything like this. It's just like pure bliss everywhere." 
It's a bye bye lady. Just getting off the train. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. I, I also experienced a little bit. See, I think Krishna gave her more. <laughs> so anyway, we start our one month talks about Lord Chaitanya. And actually, they're still recorded. I have them on, on some video. I mean, he's the most drunken things you ever can imagine. We were so intoxicated by the glories of Lord Goranga, we couldn't move, both of us. We, she would sit, and I would just start speaking for like, on the rooftop in the Mayapur, and we'd be so intoxicated, <laughs> just, just crying, laughing sometimes. And and she would her thing was, she went to uh, she'd go to Iskon Temple there, and and she would sit before the deities, and Radha and Krishna revealed themselves to her. She would sit there and cry for two hours, put a shawl over her face, you know, and sit there in a chair. She's a little older lady, you know, sit there and cry and cry and cry, just looking at those beautiful deities, with revel with realization. And then I asked her, I said, do you see the difference between Mayavadi and, and, and impersonalism? She says, <laughs> and I seen her there, you know, uh, in other times when I went to Mayapur, she would, she would also go. So that's the attractive feature of the Lord. It attracts you away from even Brahman. Fruit of activities, you, you just like, you don't even care about it. You may do it, but you don't, you know, it's just, it's such a higher taste that Lord Chaitanya gives. Even now, 500 years from from when he came, even now. See, so associating with people glorifying Lord Gore, that's, that's where it's at, because so few do it. So few do it, you know. And and it's just like when the Lord is here, he only comes once in a while, then he goes, he disappears. The only place to find him again is in his glorification. Those who have some connection and taste. Doesn't matter who they are or what they are, just if they have this connection and taste, that's where that's where it is. And that's where that, that oasis is, like an oasis in a desert. Otherwise, it's like he says, you'll see people will glorify rules and regulations and Varnashram, Dharma, and all of that stuff. They they have a taste for that, and because they haven't got a taste for this with the Lord came. You have to really be into Lord Chaitanya, and he raises you to this experience. <laughs> or you'll be into impersonalism. How many impersonalists you see everywhere? They're respecting and, and, and worshiping, and you know, all the Eckhart Tolle types, and all of that is just everybody that's the highest they can reach see? or sense enjoyment in the world and all of that fruit of activity work 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 you know only in the oasis of the glorification of lord chaitanya do you find something different see and and, and they glorify pure love of god devotees who have a, a relationship with Lord Chaitanya, they glorify pure love of God, man. The fifth goal of life and its attainment, which is so rare in this world, but it is possible by associating with the glorification of Lord Chaitanya. So let the Vedic scriptures say whatever they like. Let the learned logicians comment as they like. Whatever they say, the nectar of Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet shall always remain my life and soul. See? Ras. If you get into Ras, tasting this Ras, you get above the mind. All these people struggling to conquer the mind, the monkey of the mind, and all of this. And the mind loves Ras. And if, if it can attain it somehow, well, by association with Lord Chaitanya, the mind attains, it, it is attracted away from being your enemy it becomes attracted to well oh, i like the mind is thinking wow this ross is good man and then you go to a bookstore and you think what do i want to read all that stuff for man let me just chant the holy name let me just relish the ross and just float in this world and you know <laughs> yeah it's this is the lord gives this <coughs> This is the nectar, is, is devotional mellows, and the Lord gives it very easily, if you want that. You can give anything. You want sense enjoyment, you get that until you're tired of it. 
uh, you want money, you can get that. Whatever, you know, whatever you desire. You water it with Lord Chaitanya. So worship of Lord Chaitanya and, and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Boy, you get it. You get it. If the rare mystic perfections were, fall, were to fall in my hand, if the demigods approached to become my servants, and if my form became the forearm form of the resident of Vaikuntha, my mind would still not swerve from Lord Gorachandra for even a moment. So that's our protection in the world, actually. See, it is such a, you, this is the taste of reality that the Lord gives. See? When you, you have to taste it. If we don't relish reality, the reality is this ras, this, the bliss of a relationship with God. See, if we don't relish reality, all these things seem very interesting and important. Even the demigod stuff, mystic perfections, you want to develop all these things, uh, all the stuff in the new age, you know, it's very, it's, it seems very attractive until you taste reality. Okay? All these teachings and everything basically in the world are, are still within the universe. It's within trying to, I mean, there's so many wise people, you know, with wisdom and all of this, but it's all usually pertaining to what's inside this universe. Ras is outside of it. Ras is beyond. See, if you study Bhagavad Gita, there are many layers of coverings for the soul. The soul is covered by all these layers, and each one is more and more and bigger and bigger. You know, so you got air. The soul is covered by air, fire, water, ether, and then the layers of false ego. See, all this stuff, mystic perfections, all the stuff is within the, the realm of the universe. To be a superman and superpowers and all of that. It's all through that false ego layer. But Ross is beyond that. He, that's why the Lord comes into the world to show this. To demonstrate how to connect with this. Otherwise, all these things will seem very interesting and very important. The Lord's Maya is unconquerable except by surrendering to the Lord. We cannot conquer this the Maya. We will serve either the Lord or the Maya, you know. You know, usually a little bit of both while we're <laughs> getting out of this crazy uh, world here. <laughs> darkness. A lot of darkness. If the so let me live in a terrible cage of fire. I shall never associate with those adverse to Lord Chaitanya's feet. My heart has no desire to go to Vaikuntha or any other place for a single moment. I could not taste the pollen of the lotus flower of Lord Chaitanya's feet. You know, I, I noticed the protection. I get. You know, I, I you know I was into you know I was going back and forth between Krishna and Christ, trying or Krishna and yeah Krishna and Christ, trying to figure out things. But I noticed the deeper I get into Lord Chaitanya and I have associations sometimes with Christians, Christians are still adverse to this. They they don't they don't appreciate the glorification of Lord Chaitanya. They think it's only there's actually an aversion. I see the people getting purified, I see stuff coming out of their hearts. Literally, like nasty things. When I'm preaching about Lord Chaitanya, so I look at this and I think, hey, well, even Christians have something to learn from this. He, Lord, Ch The glorification of Lord Chaitanya is so deep, it's pulling stuff out of Christians. And you know, when they hear this, they come and they comment and everything, and some of the nastiest things come, hypocrisy and anger and hatred. and <laughs> it's like, Wow, is that in your heart? But they're good people. You know, it's just this, this is the... the, the in, this is how powerful the Lord Chaitanya is, so pure and so just, you know, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but it pulls stuff out of the heart. You just never know. You know, it was even in there. Yeah. Yeah. See, because Lord Chaitanya is hidden even from the Vedas, there's not much talk about his this incarnation. Uh. 
So I may become famous in this world, or I may attain wonderful mystic uh, uh, powers, or by worshipping Lord Vishnu, I may attain a handsome four-armed spiritual form like his. Still, if these things separated me from devotional service to Lord Gore, my heart would not love them. See? That's the only way to be. we got to get attracted out of this universe, man. Okay. Devotees of Lord Chaitanya get such a high taste that these other things, even to get... Say, see, a lot of people, a lot of Christians even, I, you know, they want they want to have the same opulence as, as, as God, as the Incarnation. They want to be like Jesus. They even talk, I mean, just right out there, man. You know, we want, you know, they want that. They want to have equal form with God, in other words. And you can have that. So it's a liberation. It's a kind of a salvation. But what Lord Chaitanya came to give is something even more than that. More than salvation, more than the same opulences as Jesus and all of this. You, know, you want to be um, like um, one with that and, 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 and to be like a king. This is even the Christians, they want this. It's a salvation desire, liberation. Not against it, just identifying. Because I spent years trying to identify these things. It's very important to understand the difference. Yeah. So, so that's, and, but, and they can't understand the mentality of a devotee who wants to put this necklace around there uh, in the Shishastika prayer. This garden, this necklace of chanting the holy name and being humbler than a blade of grass and feeling oneself really wretched. This actually causes this kind of devotion to arise. It is feeling very wretched, but the psychologists will say this is low self-esteem or something. It's bad. No, it's transcendental, actually. Uh, it's different than material um, dualities where there's, you know, you feel yourself either like really, you know, like worthless, but that's because of conditioning, or you feel yourself, I'm so great from affirmations. Oh, I'm the greatest guy. I'm one with God, and I'm all this. I am this. I am. It's, it's different. It's still within duality of this consciousness. The spiritual potency, the devotees, they feel, you know, if you get a relationship with the Lord, there's more and more increase of this humility of feeling oneself really like lowly and, I mean, insignificant. I mean, because we are. It's the size of an atom. So Makunda says, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Chaitanya devotees have an extra spiritual form. One for associating with Krishna and another for associating simultaneously with Lord Chaitanya. That's right. Yeah, and and the form of associating with Lord Chaitanya is amazing because that's the preaching, the munificent mood. You know, isn't it, isn't it nice to be a giver? Isn't it nice to liberate people? See, the, the pastimes... In Vrindavan, or only in Vrindavan, you know, and so that's there. So the extra form, obviously, is so for preaching because there's a taste in that. You know, it's like you know, a good example is Prabhupada. <laughs> He's sitting in New York in his office, and you know, the people say, "Don't you miss Vrindavan?" He says, "What do you mean, miss Vrindavan? I'm in Vrindavan." See, that's. That's a relationship with Lord Chaitanya's life. He's out preaching, and he's in Vrindavan at the same time. Lord Chaitanya was the same thing. He was saying, he's going down, he said, I gotta go to Vrindavan, I gotta go to Vrindavan, you know, Vrindavan, where, oh, I gotta go there, I gotta go there. And Advaita Chari comes along, says, hey, wherever you are is Vrindavan, so come to my house and let me feed you. <laughs> See, he's in the mood of Vrindavan. So Vrindavan comes along, but he's out there preaching too. That's devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Okay. People, you know, when I go to uh, during Kartik, I go to uh, Mayapur, and they may say, "Why aren't you going to? Why aren't you going to uh, Vrindavan?" I says, "Hey, 
Kartik's here in Mayapur also, and it's a little easier to relish <laughs> because of the munificence of of what of uh, Lord Chaitanya. I mean, all it's all the replicas of Vrindavan is all in Mayapur. You can even go to the spots; they have them all there. Yeah. So it's it's same, and the only difference is you don't get the big crowds of people because they don't understand that, I guess. <laughs> it's nice and peaceful there, you know, in, the, in Vrindavan and Kartik, man, so many people everywhere, all of that stuff. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's the, the amazing thing about a connection with Lord Chaitanya. You know, I, I remember when I was, um, I was in Vrindavan also, and I'd be, I was reading the books, and when I go to India, I get just so whacked out on, you know, it's just... Is so thick with this, this bhakti. It's just amazing. And I'm sitting there reading the uh, going around. This is what you get from Lord Chaitanya. I'm sitting there reading the uh, the Parikram book, you know, going here and there and everything. And then the big bus comes and says, okay, everybody on the bus and go around in the Parikram and all that. And I'm sitting there like just wasted, just reading about the Parikram and the book. And they say, it's time to go. I said, you know, and, and basically the point is, a relationship with Lord Chaitanya is you don't, you know, you don't have to do all these difficult things that people are doing. You just get it all very simply. You just go, you know, the, you get to taste the ras very easily in the name in the in the, in the pastimes. Your mouth just wants to glorify Lord Chaitanya and magnify and all of this. It just gives this. You know, you know, you know. I have no qualification to even pick up this book, you know. But the Lord gives everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's amazing. O Lord Chaitanya, O merciful one, O supremely generous one, O Lord who fills the hearts of the living entities with the different mellows of devotional love. O oh, wonderful, splendid Lord. O oh, golden, golden complexion, Lord. O oh, ocean of transcendental virtues. You want virtues? Don't go to the New Age. Go to Lord Chaitanya, man. Virtue sprouts from associating with Lord Chaitanya, chanting his names, chanting the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. You can, if you just focus on that path, all kinds of virtues that people are spending, all kinds of money, they want to be a good speaker. They want to be a, you know, um, they want to, you know, like become austere so they can get free and liberated and all. They want liberation. They want to uh, attain economic uh, good situation. They want all these things. But you just go to Lord Chaitanya in one swoop. Everything is adjusted. Right, rightly. Okay. All virtues, you know, the, everything will start to develop just by being dedicated to this path. See? So I, I, I see devotees sometimes even, they have faith in other things. They have faith in like some new age teachers, uh, and faith in this and faith in that. But that's, that's all splitting your consciousness and, and taking from your faith in in the devotional service of hearing, chanting, remembering about the Lord. That this is a path, man. This is you know, this path is the is of is surrender to the Lord. It's the Lord's deepest heart. This is the path you can cross over the ocean of Maya very easily. It becomes like the water in a Hoofprint of calf is the glorification of the Lord. No one is a loser for that. Okay? It's it's the it's the boat that is glorified by all the Vedas, Lord and Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Bhagavan, all of that is to hear, chant, and remember the Lord. The Lord taught it himself. You know, he even taught these ones who were dedicated to rules and regulations and, and they and they wanted to be have liberation they wanted to be liberated and they were Vaishnavas, Tatavadi Vaishnavas. He meets them 
and they promote, they were glorifying Varnashram, Dharma, and rules and regulations, and to get the five kinds of liberations and, and salvation and all that. And he said, no, 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 no. No, hearing, chanting, remembering about the name, the fame, the glorification. Sadhu Sangha, come hear, hear those, hear, you know, hang out with those who are glorifying the Lord's qualities and character and name. So see there. That's why we do this program. Yeah. You know, this is what the whole purpose of the program is. And you, you come there, you, then you get addicted to this. And, and then that the addiction to the world becomes diminished. <laughs> you know? Hey, man. This is, this is for connoisseurs. That's why we only get one, two, or three people. You know, I guess. You know, I like it. Those who come, like those who, you know, I have people, we only have a few people here, but, you know, some of them that come, they just cry in torrents of tears. You know, why? Because Lord Chaitanya is very merciful to those who like, he comes to Sadhu Sangha. He even says, you can build wells, you can do all kinds of sadhanas and everything, but you can barely attain me. But you come to Sadhu Sangha, oh, I'm immediately there. I'm inspiring the speaker. I'm inspiring the hearers. You can feel my presence. It's nothing like it. You're nothing like God's presence. Man is so enlivening in spirit. It's the real life. It's full of ras. It's full of revelation. It's full of love. It's full of devotion. Nothing is like it. It is only in the glorification of him and his devotees. That's where we're right. We're writing books now, because it's just like with Prabhupada. People don't until you write a book. <laughs> you know? People don't take it seriously. It took him forty years, and somebody said you should write a book. And he finally started writing the Bhagavatam, right? And 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 people started to get it. So we're doing that now. God has inspired me. I got a good transcribing program, so I'm doing it myself, and it's writing is amazing. So, because, you know, I don't know, there's, to me, there's, you know, what, what is living in this world, man? It's, it's dead. And nothing, it's the same old, same old. There's nothing going on. It's nothing new. And it's getting so worse. I mean, come on, turn on the news. Look, people getting so, they, they're intoxicated by the mode of ignorance and going around killing people here and there. And everywhere. the whole world is going into fear. Okay. I'm not, I don't feel afraid or anything. I'm just looking at all this stuff. Why? Because serving the Lord, connecting with God, takes away all the fear. There's no more fear. Fear is only disconnection from God. Okay. So what are, how are people doing? I, I, I'm watching the news, and it's very interesting because they're like, well, we got to counteract this, you know, and, 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 and put up more money. We need more money into more funds and uh, more taxes, and, you know, so we can... Oh, uh, Sachi? Hi there. Hi. I'm doing a, a Facebook Live thing. You want to come on? Huh? I can't. I won't do that for about ten minutes. For ten minutes? Where are you going to go yeah. somewhere? I just got up. Huh? Oh, you just got up. I, okay, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Just, okay, I'm on Facebook Live. I, you just go to my page and you'll see it. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you know, this is you want to conquer fear. Just we have to connect the Lord again. Literally, His spiritual potency. You got to feel it, not just hear. Just really feel it. And this is a good way. All right. Um, oh Lord Krishna, your golden form is the life of devotees. It is the philanthropist that gives in charity the nectar of pure love of God. When shall I wholeheartedly love this golden form? When 
because I have finally understood the secret of this golden form, will the splendor of Srimati Radharani's jewel-like toenails shine in my heart. I meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead who bears the name Chaitanya. He wears a garland fully blossomed of Dhammaka flowers. He pleases everyone. He enjoys pastimes in a secluded garden and he continually chants the holy names of Lord Krishna. He is the abode of compassion. His fair complexion is effulgent as gold. Oh, glad you like this. I pray that my mind always remember Lord Goranga, the sannyasi whose eyes are like two bumblebees drawn to the glistening lotus flower of Lord Jagannath's face in the festive city of Nilachal, who is tossed by great waves of ecstatic love of God, and who is the same Lord Krishna who appeared like Cupid to the doe-eyed girls of Raj. <laughs> he, was, he was that Lord Krishna, and he was also in the mood of Radharani. Man. He, he was like her, you know, he would look at, you know, the form of Krishna and, and just be so immersed in love of God. And so he showed that, and and we're you know we're we're here now five hundred years, and we we see these things by our ears, and it's the more we hear about them, the more we start to feel them. Okay? The more attracted, the more dedicated we get. See, because it's by association, we've associated with the modes of nature here. You know, we've associated with people who are who are intoxicated by other things than Lord Krishna. You know, intoxicated by other paths other than the path of Lord Goranga. You know, when you the Jesus statement applies to Lord Chaitanya also. I am the way, the life, and the truth. No one comes unto the Father but by me. See? Lord Chaitanya is also an incarnation of God. See? So and 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 each incarnation they they have their varieties of um, you know specialties. And Lord Chaitanya is very, has his specialty. He's a very unique specialty. Yeah? Gives the deepest revelation about the absolute truth. Not just that God is a great king or salvation, like many Christians, they just want to be like a king, like Jesus. That means you want us to have the same form and opulences as God. See, just I mean, you can't even, you, by associating with Lord Chaitanya, you can see all these things, and otherwise you can't see it. Christian can't see what they're even wanting, how it how it compares with what Lord Chaitanya came to give. You know, you can't even experience it without association with Lord Chaitanya and his devotees. Okay. Uh. So I take shelter of Lord Gorahari who has accepted the saffron garment of a sannyasi, whose bodily hairs stand up in ecstasy, and whose handsome form is decorated with pearl-like tears flowing from his lotus eyes. When will Lord Gorahari, who is more handsome than Cupid, more purifying than the celestial Ganges, more cooling than the moon, and more sweet than a Madhavika nectar, more generous than a desire creeper and more affectionate than a mother appear in my meditation and lovingly place his lotus feet in my heart. So we'll end here. I have to do some morning goodies because it's, you know, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to go to the spa, work out a little bit. And then I'll be back for, um, we'll have a little satsang, I think about 8 o'clock, 8.15 today. All right, man. Thank you for coming. It's great. Thank you for inspiring me to your presence. Inspire me to speak about Lord Chaitanya more. This Facebook Live is really nice. It's really, in, you know, just put it on immediately. So Mukunda says, I love Lord Chaitanya, but I am wondering what would be the difference between being a devotee of Radha and of Lord Chaitanya. Well, actually, there's no difference. 
<laughs> if you see a difference, it's just some material duality still stuck in your mind. That's all. Just keep worshiping Lord Chaitanya and don't try and figure it out with your mind because you can't. There's no difference between Lord Chaitanya and Radharani. There's no difference between Lord Chaitanya and Krishna because Krishna Das Kavira said they're the combined form of Radha and Krishna. You can see the mood of Krishna sometimes being expressed in Lord Chaitanya and the mood of Radharani expressed. So you can learn about both characters of Lord Chaitanya depending on what pastime is doing. So this all comes. Don't, you can't figure it out here. No way. Just keep worshiping Lord Chaitanya and keep hearing about the Lord. It's not a. It's beyond the mind. You get an actual experience of these things, and you start to. It'll just start. Revelations will start to come. If you become a devotee of Lord Chaitanya, then um, usually that means you'll become a devotee of Radha and Krishna, or. Radha, it just, it'll all spontaneously manifest. And the way you know is you just start to become attracted to certain devotees. Like, say, if you're attracted to Rupa Goswami and the writings of Sanatana Goswami, it's a good chance you're a devotee of, uh, of Radharani. <laughs> you know? If you like Nityananda's pastimes and really feel devoted and everything, then you might be like a friend, a friend of Krishna. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Just keep keep hanging out with uh, the glorification of the Lord and all. We'll just, just get revelation realizations. All right, man. I'll be back in about an hour um, on Google Hangouts. So I don't know if you're awake or whatever. And you can come if you want to. All right. Hare Krishna.